What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and this is the Wooting One RGB keyboard. It's an analog keyboard. It's not brand new or anything, but I've never tried an analog keyboard before, and it's really groundbreaking. It can actually kind of change the way you game overall. What an analog keyboard does is actually reflect how hard you press on these keys. So for example, in like Overwatch, this is how fast you usually walk, but say you press down on the key a little bit softer, it'll reflect that in game and you'll walk much slower. So how hard you press reflects your actual movements in game. So a really unique keyboard here, like I said, it's not new. I just got my hands on it because I was really interested and I never tried an analog keyboard before. And if you haven't either and you're interested, you're gonna wanna check this out. So starting off, I think the keyboard looks really nice. It's a compact 60% layout, so it's not gonna take up much space in your desk. And it's simple and professional with the matte black metal base. With that being said, like other similar keyboards with this construction, you'll be able to see some fingerprints and marks easier, so be prepared to keep this thing clean. On the bottom of the keyboard, we have two feet that fold out to elevate its backside, plus a detachable micro USB cable that can either be routed out the middle, left, or right side for better cable management on your desk. So the bread and butter here to the uniqueness of the Wooting One comes under the keycap. There's actually a lot of really cool things going on with these flare tech switches here. First, the switches are hot swappable, meaning you can easily remove them from your keyboard and swap them with other flare tech switches without having to solder anything. And they actually give you the puller and the switches just to pop in and out of the board. And this is really cool in case you want to completely switch all the keys so it's like a brand new keyboard, or if you just want certain keys to have a different feel and response. So for example, you can replace WASD or just your most used uh, switches in games to a new flare tech switch or say a switch dies on you. You don't have to replace the whole keyboard, just switch out the switch. I'm saying that a lot. Now stock, this keyboard comes with the linear 55s, uh, but they also include a few of the clicky 55 switches in the box. Let's check out the differences here. The linear 55 is equivalent to like red switches and clicky 55 is equivalent to uh, blue switches. So the linear is obviously gonna be a more linear switch while the clicky 55 is non-linear, uh, but you do have that nice tactile and uh, clicky feedback, unlike the linear. Uh, both have an operating force of 55 centinewtons, which is pretty much equivalent to 56 grams of force when you're pressing it down. And both have a lifespan of 100 million clicks. And to me, I actually really like the linear ones. They feel really nice and smooth. So again, no soldering needed. Simply pop them out and pop them back in your board. And to note, you can't use other switch types. Like you can't just pop in a cherry switch here. It's not compatible. I'll do a sound test now so you can hear how my keyboard sounds with those linear switches. Then after that, I'll just do a, a simple switch comparison for you guys so you can hear differences between the two. So you saw with the keys, they have the LED light there. So now let's talk about the RGB lights. And they actually added a ton of new capabilities from a firmware update. You have your standard rainbow wave, an ocean wave, which is gonna you know resemble the waves in water with different hues of blue. Inferno wave is reds and oranges and stuff. Spring wave is more the same, but with greens. And then the same applies for the pink setting, which is just light and deep pinks. You then have the scan effect, which sends a strip of lights along your keyboard. You can go in and change the width of the keys too. Breathing simply breathes the colors in and out. Cycle is going to go through all the colors in a gradient. You have your ripple effect, which is going to send out like a wave of lights depending from where you press. Trail is very familiar. It leaves a trail of light from the keys you press. And then it gets interesting. Touch is going to be a visual indicator of how hard you're pressing down being portrayed in the function row so you can see the analog force in real time. And then kind of the same thing for the jelly effect, which is gonna reflect your force, but in like a dimple effect, or like you're pressing down in jelly. Now the lighting isn't obnoxious or distracting overall, which is good, and it's not overly bright, just enough to give your desktop a little bit more pop. Now to show you how to you know, configure this keyboard for the analog inputs, let's head over to the PC and I'll show you around the software. All right, now the software for the Wooting One is actually really interesting and it gives you a lot of control when it comes to customizing the function of all your keys. You have pretty much four profiles. You have your digital profile, which is gonna be essentially like your, uh, just like a regular keyboard, but you can go in and then change your uh, different profiles from pressing down mode and like left, down, right. So you're gonna change it up. 
But to get the full control of the analog switches, you have your analog profile one, two, and three, as you can see. And now what these are gonna do is gonna let you have that full analog control pretty much like it would if it was, as you can see here, like a joystick or a gamepad input. So your left joystick up would be, you know, W for moving forward, ASD, all that stuff. But you have just complete control. I've never seen anything like this. You can actually go in and as you see here, change the actuation point of these key switches. So you can have them so they actuate quicker. So as you're pressing them down, you know, they actuate as a full key press quicker than they would other key switches out there. Even go in and have full control of the analog curve settings. You can really create your own custom curve, whether it be a linear, aggressive, slow, smooth, instant, or if you want, just really configure that to uh, fit your, I guess, your preference of how you're pressing a key and how it's actually um, turning into an input. And then going down here to the profile manager tab, they make it really, really simple. As you can see here for the import profile code, um, they have a really great community forum where you can go in and uh, like find different games and stuff that this is compatible with. And there are these codes for the game. So as you can see here, I have like the wooding uh, Overwatch profile, one for Rocket League. You paste the code right here, and then it's gonna import that uh, game setting to your keyboard without you having to go in and download different you know, uh, profiles to import. You just press in the code, import it to one of your analog profiles, your digital profile, and be good to go. But I'm just really, really impressed with here. Like, like I said, the full control, really impressed with the custom curves as well as the actuation point. It is unlike anything I've ever seen before. And honestly, I mean, it's pretty user friendly. So it's not that complicated. But check this out in a game like CSGO. Right now, what I'm doing is, you know, having the analog input while I'm firing. You can see those circles are reflecting kind of like my spray rate where the bullets are going. And when I'm walking slow, my spray is very controlled. If I shift walk, which is like, you know, a slower walk in game while I'm firing, it's still very, very erratic. Like my spray is everywhere. Then as you can see the normal movement in game, your spray is uncontrollable. So for CSGO, you do have quite the advantage here because your spray while walking, while firing is really controlled. And let's just say, this is definitely a great game to take advantage of this with. Now the next thing is gonna be compatibility. Um, not all games are compatible with this keyboard, only games that you can use a controller with. So most games, but again, not all games. And one annoying thing with that is before you can actually get this up and running in game, you have to go in and enable either like a gamepad or a controller and then disable your main functions like WASD. You have to completely unbind them in the game for this to work properly. It's just an extra nuisance that I wish this keyboard just did automatically for you. So who is this keyboard for? And admittedly, it's not for everybody. It's gonna be best for somebody who wants to have a whole new experience while gaming. And for people who play a lot of like CSGO, Overwatch, um, especially Rocket League. Uh, the actual analog input controlling the speed of your car is huge. If you don't use a controller for that, if you're a mouse and keyboard guy for Rocket League, this will really, really help you out. It's actually really cool. Um, but the biggest thing that I had a hard time adjusting to was the muscle memory here of getting used to the different, I guess, pressure for my movements. I'm used to just, you know, slightly uh, pressing down like WASD for my micro movements in game. Uh, but now it's like I have to really, really uh, kind of fine tune the way my fingers work when I'm pressing a key down so that I can reflect the slower movements in game. That was definitely the hardest adjustment. I did mention I'm not the biggest fan of the, you know, unbinding and stuff and enabling um, a gamepad in game. Just an extra step that I don't want to take at the end of the day. And for some games, it's just not worth it. Like in PUBG, you can't use this to actually walk around. It's only used to uh, control vehicles in your parachute. So that's kind of, you know, annoying unless you want to make different profiles and switch them up on the go. Um, so like I said, a, a smaller list of compatibility with this is going to be the main thing. If the main games you play are compatible with this, then definitely check it out. And I'll have that list for you. I'll put the compatibility list in the description for you guys. But other than that, I love the build quality of this. It's a nice looking keyboard, nice and compact. The flare tech switches are really cool. Um, and just stop the whole hot swap functionality and just the way these, these keys and the keyboard works overall is really, really unique. I'm a big fan of it. You just got the, like I said, work around the little quirks to it. So it works best for you in game. And kind of like the, the mouse review I did yesterday, spend time and get used to this because it is a whole new, I guess, world of inputs now with this, uh, with your muscle memory. So just spend time, get used to it, and you'll probably be, uh, you'll, you'll definitely like it after you uh, get really familiar with it, you know? So that'll wrap it up. Hope you enjoyed. If you wanna check it out, like I said, I will have this listed for you in the description down below. It's actually like an Amazon's choice or like a bestseller. Uh, so that's really cool. And I'll also put that compatibility list for you as well.
If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Well, I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.